Hello everyone, this is Dr. Michael Shear with Learn Lodi, a free resource on how to market treatment plan place and maintain locator overdenture implants. This video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be describing the utilization of our radio opaque PVS impression technique, CBCT scanning, and using Blue Sky Plan software to generate our in office 3D printed surgical guide for a Lodi implant case. Step number one is we want to go ahead and make sure we have the Blue Sky Plan software installed on our computer. If you don't have the software already, just go to blueskybio.com and download the software and register it for yourself. It's free, no charge, just go check it out. It's a wonderful software. We're going to go ahead and open it. The Blue Sky Plan software looks somewhat similar to all the other implant planning software packages. First step is we want to go ahead and click on File, New Project. And we've got our patient scans already saved on our patient's desktop here. Our CBCT scanner is going to generate two individual DICOM folders, one with our patient scan wearing the radio pig PVS line denture, and a second DICOM folder of our denture and radio pig PVS scan by itself. We need to click on the patient scan folder and click OK. The software is going to think and it's going to load up all of our information. We just click OK. Now at this point, it gives us a visually rendering of this particular patient scan. Click OK. And now we've successfully brought this into the Blue Sky Plan software. First step, I like to go ahead and merge my second cone beam scan on top of this first one. But we need to get ready for that first. If you don't see the screen like you see in front of you, make sure you go ahead and click on Mode Advanced. Also, make sure Mode Digital Surgical Guide is selected. You may or may not see these little things here on the right hand side, which are called panels. If you click on Panels, Brightness Contrast, it's going to give you the Brightness Contrast functions. I do want to turn this up a little bit because it always needs a little bit of tweaking. First step is as we go ahead and we go and pull File, Import DICOMS, Impression Scan. Since we've made a radio opaque PVS impression, I need to use the load DICOM impression scan function of the software. Click on my patient's folder with the files from the CBCT scan of the patient's denture and radio opaque PVS and click OK. The computer system takes a minute to think and it'll bring up the scan of my patient's denture. I click OK and the computer system thinks for a moment. After a moment, it brings in my scan showing you the radiographic appearance of the patient's denture. If you want to, you can click on this, holding the shift key down and cutting away this little portion down here on the bottom, which is just the chin cup from my cone beam scanner. Using my left click and hold, I can rotate this image around and using my wheel button or my right click button in and out, I can move around. What you want to do is, is you want to bring the slider around and showing you the maximum amount of data that's visible. Typically, the slider is meant to go all the way to the left for this particular technique. After doing so, click Next, and the computer system thinks. Now that my computer has processed that information, it's going to show you a three-dimensional rendering of the patient's cone beam scan data. Now this has just successfully created a model, and this model can be exported now as an STL file. I want to stop the wizard right now. I don't want to draw the limiting curve unless I want to generate a model from my radio opaque PVS impression. That's a little bit more of an advanced technique and is unnecessary for our Lodi guides. At this point, I just click on the red X button and it's going to bring in my patient scan for what you see here. Looking here at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you're going to see our patient scan and our denture scan. Also getting you familiar with the Blue Sky Plan software, you can see here these yellow outlines on all of the different portions of the scanning software is going to show you where the outline of my model is. My goal is, is to now join or to stitch or merge this second scan, meaning the radio pig PVS in the denture, properly so that way it's in the exact same position on my scanning of the patient. To do that, what you do is, is click on Panels, Model Manipulation, and it's going to bring up this window. 
Make sure that you click your drop down impression scan. Mandible is selected, and I'm going to click on points. What I do at this point is hit the align button, and it's going to generate an alignment function within the software. Now it's created a rendering of my patient's scan here on the left and a rendering of my patient's model from my DICOM data of the denture and radiopaque PVS alone. The goal here is, is, is that the radiopaque PVS creates little markers that are visible between both sides of the scan. Just like you would use gutta percha or spherical markers like Shermark buttons, the radiopaque PVS in this becomes your alignment markers. Meaning that I can see here in that retromolar pad area, I've got a little bump here, and that bump corresponds to here. So if I hold the shift key down on my keyboard and click in the exact same spot on both sides of the scan, it's going to allow me to digitally join the two together in those spots. Same thing here on the lingual surface. I can see I've got this little bump here, and that bump corresponds here. Looking here at the lingual portion on the opposite side of the arch, I've got this little bump right here, and that bump corresponds to right here. So I click here, and then I click here. And I'm going to work my way across to the other side of the retromolar pad. I have a bump here and a bump here. And then finally, it helps to have some here on the anterior portion just to make sure that the stitching is done correctly. I've got this nice little V bump right in here. And that should pretty much do it. I might want to pick up one over here if I can, but it doesn't look like I can. Sure we can. This little divot right in here and this little divot right in there. Now once I picked up about four to six markers that correspond to each side here and here, I click on the OK button. Now what it's going to do is it's going to digitally join my scans together and I'm going to compare where the yellow outline of the scan looks here versus the actual gray shadow of the patient scan shown on the left. And now in the posterior it looks like the emerging is really pretty good and the anterior might just need to tweak it a little bit. So I purposely did it with that approach just to show you that here is the outline and every time that you really need to do this or need to join multiple scans together you need to tweak this just a little bit. By doing that I'm still in the model manipulation tab I just click on this adjust model uh, position manually and then I just use my keyboard just kind of click it up a little bit and now it's successfully in the proper position. Rolling across we've got an excellent merging of these two data sets. The yellow outline is going to correspond with the proper areas all the way around. So right in here is a bump and it corresponds to the gray bump that's inside of there. By doing that this is how we're going to join multiple scans together to create a surgical guide. Now at this point, I can uncheck the Adjust Model Position Manually button and verify that the cusp tips are all aligned properly. And you see this yellow outline here and this yellow outline here. This is a really nice merge of this data. Now at this particular point, what we need to do is just go ahead and plan our Lodi implants. If you're interested in learning how to plan everything in Blue Sky Plan software, please go ahead and check out my online course, www.learndental3d.com. We're going to go ahead and skip forward to the section and now show you how to design the surgical guide after the implants are fully placed. Now that my implants have been turned on, I'm going to go ahead and show you the actual surgical guide fabrication now. To help facilitate that, as I click on my little skull man here in the bottom left hand corner, click on presets and non-shaded bones. What it's going to do is going to show me my four Lodi implants in the bone volume. Everything all completed and the implants are in the proper position. Before I do any sort of surgical guide fabrication, I want to make sure that I can see the outline of my implants properly within bone and then also at the right angulation of where my prosthetics are going to be. Now to go ahead and go with the surgical guide fabrication, I click on Panels, Implant List. 
Now I've got my implants all properly planned out. What I want to do is to set my parameters so that way it's ready for the Lodi surgical guide approach. What we need to do is just go ahead here where the implant list is, make sure I click on custom kit. If you don't see all these functions here, make sure mode, advanced, and digital surgical guides are selected. You see here I have a 12.0 millimeter implant, 2.4 millimeter occlusal diameter. We're going to go ahead and set my guide hole diameters to 4.1 and my height to 5 millimeters. And my offset, we're just going to leave it whatever default it is. If you need to change yours, go ahead and change it to the 9 millimeters. That's perfectly fine. Now I'm going to repeat that for all of my implants. And now we're ready to move forward. I want to click on this lock button here at the top right to make sure all my implants are locked down properly. Now when I click on panels, I click on guide fabrication. When I'm in the guide fabrication panel, you don't really need to do too much here. The simplicity of this surgical guide technique and fabrication is amazing. All you need to do is click on high or the guide quality. Make sure impression scan is selected. So left click here, click on impression scan. Make sure it says lock implants and virtual teeth and make sure mandible is selected. When I go ahead and click the create scan appliance guide, it's going to pop up to the desktop asking me if I want to save this file. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it as anonymous patient. That's fine. You can give it your patient's name if you wanted to. Click OK. And then it's going to process the surgical guide. After the computer is done processing, it's going to go ahead and give you this sort of cloudy appearance over here on the left. That means it's done its job properly. I now see here I have a scan appliance guide as a model. What I need to do is click on panels, surfaces, and it's going to bring up the list of surfaces visible. I need to click the check button where it says impression scan and click off the hint. What I've now done is I've created a outline of a model using my patient's denture and radiopaque PVS impression with these cylindrical holes cut away from that patient scan. Now we can see we've created these holes that correspond with where our proposed implants are in the jawbone. This is now going to become your surgical guide. This right here is going to guide my drill stops in my locator overdenture implant system surgical kit. And this is a successful surgical guide that's been designed. To export the surgical guide, I click on File, Export Data, and I want to turn off everything by clicking these boxes, or I can click at the top of the list. The only thing I want selected is the check on the scan appliance guide. I click on Export, and now I'm going to save it under whichever folder I would prefer. So under Desktop STLs, I'm going to go ahead and call this Anonymous Patient Guide and I click the Save button. And now I've just exported my surgical guide. I can minimize this, bring up my folder, and I can see here I've got my anonymous patient guide right here. And if I double click that, it's going to go ahead and open up whichever software I have associated with viewing STL files. Now this can be 3D printed using whichever sort of 3D printer or technique that you want to use. The idea here is, is, is that those holes are going to correspond with my drill stops in my Lodi surgical kit, as will be described in our additional videos. So this video has been a demonstration of utilizing the Blue Sky Plan software to import our multiple CBCT scans of my patient and my patient wearing the complete denture with the radio pig PVS, and then to merge that with the scan of the denture and the radio pig PVS alone. This is Dr. Michael Shear with Learn Lodi, a free resource on how to market, treatment plan, place, and maintain locator overdenture implants. Thank you.